Well, I was uh, fortunate enough to receive a Pullman Foundation scholarship. I grew up on the south side of Chicago, which is where the Pullman Foundation is headquartered. And uh, among my options to go into school, I was looking at various places where I thought I could uh, grow uh, intellectually, spiritually, and uh, also uh, because of my family tradition, which is a strong tradition of Lutheranism, mm -hmm. uh, Valparaiso was a natural choice. And I also had been on campus as a little lad because my aunt and uncle had gone to school here. So I think I was like four years old when I first was at the chapel. And uh, it was an hour away from uh, our home. So it was far enough, but not too far away from home. And so all of that uh, came together. And uh, I made a decision. Uh, I, I was alternatively going to go. I had a pre-medical scholarship mm -hmm. uh, to the University of Illinois, which I was considering. But um, I decided to go to Valparaiso. I think it had to be uh, understood contextually in the events that were going on in the late 1960s, mm -hmm. which, uh, as we all know, is a very tumultuous time. Absolutely. And the years, uh, let's say 1967 to 1970, uh, this campus had so much activity going on politically connected mm -hmm. uh, with the civil rights movement, the war in Vietnam, uh, unrest on student campuses across the country, then uh, when I'd actually started law school, the invasion of Cambodia, mm -hmm. the tragedies at Kent State, all of that uh, had an impact on many of us who were here. And so we started uh, to focus, uh, myself and friends, on developing our political consciousness and also trying to find a path that uh, we could make a difference uh, and not just feel totally alienated and frustrated from mm -hmm. what was going on around us. I mean, those, that time period was very unique, and uh, those of us who were here, not only in Valparaiso, but on other campuses at that time, I think had unique uh, experiences that were very formative in their future career paths. I think I viewed law as a channel, as a pragmatic channel to put energy that otherwise might be displaced uh, in uh, protesting, mm -hmm. uh, in viewing uh, myself as outside of uh, any systemic opportunity to make a difference in the world, mm -hmm. both locally and uh, internationally. And uh, I also had a keen interest in writing. Uh, my undergraduate degree is in English and political science. Mm -hmm. So I've always been interested in developing writing skills, speaking skills, and I had an interest in the political system. So that, I think, coupled with, I was very fortunate to spend a semester in the overseas program in Cambridge mm -hmm. in 1968. Uh, the program had just started, and uh, that was the greatest experience uh, in terms of helping to form who I would like to be, because I was exposed to international scholarship, international travel, other ways of thinking about all of the problems that we were confronting here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's made a very permanent uh, impression on, on my character. And I, in addition to coming back to Valparaiso, mm -hmm. uh, which I view as my academic home since mm -hmm. 1965, I also make several pilgrimages, I would say, to Cambridge periodically. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, Cambridge was very formative because I was 19 years old and I found myself traveling throughout Europe. Mm -hmm. In 1968, which was also a major year of political unrest Absolutely. across the continent, mm -hmm. and um, I got to participate as a, an observer of many of those events. And uh, I, I've always been naturally curious and an explorer, and so I thought um, going forward, if I went into law, I would like to be able to combine both very practical, pragmatic skills that I would need to develop in law school so as to make a living, right. but also to try to place the work I was doing in a larger focus internationally. And so I've, I've always been interested in trying to uh, combine both of those interests throughout my career. Well, I uh, periodically was interested in the work of the American Bar Association internationally. I, I'm not someone who is by inclination 
a, a joiner of organizations uh, and, and participating in organizational bureaucracies, but I did think that the ABA, this dimension of the American Bar Association, had something that I was keenly interested in. Mm -hmm. And um, what I planned to do and what I did do was to bring some practical skills that I thought could apply uh, to law schools which were trying to find a new course after the fall of communism in Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. And so uh, because of my clinical background here at Valparaiso, uh, where I was uh, deeply impressed by the work that we did as, as students here in the clinical program, um, I decided that here was an opportunity for me uh, to go to Eastern Europe mm -hmm. and to try to develop clinical programs to teach rising law students mm -hmm. who otherwise were totally alienated from their culture to give them a path forward where they could apply their own talents to do justice. Thing. Well, everyone uh, has a unique perspective on uh, what their priorities are in life and uh, I actually would say I was fortunate that I did not grow up wealthy or uh, overly invested in ma material uh, pursuits. And so I did want to make a living, obviously, and, mm -hmm. uh, but I thought that the opportunities were there, uh, starting out as a legal services poverty law attorney, that I could make a living, but also practice the type of law that I was naturally drawn towards. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, I, I, much of the areas of law that people practice in, um, they just don't appeal to me. That's not a judgment. Sure. It simply it's, doesn't align with, with my interest. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was very fortunate that after graduating from law school that it was a time when legal services programs were receiving funding throughout the United States. And uh, it was a great opportunity for myself, but also for many of the students here who came out of the clinical program at Valparaiso and, and elsewhere, follow that path. And uh, I think to this day, Many of my friends who went into legal services work still politically, uh, ethically, are aligned with, with representing the interests of, of people who are seeking individual justice who, because of either race, religion, poverty, or any other bases of, of discrimination. So um, it's, it's been a life pursuit. Well, I uh, did have a strong core of Christian beliefs, mm -hmm. which I, I have had my whole life, which is can be very different, of course, than uh, doctrinaire religious beliefs. Right. That's a different conversation. Right. Uh, but I think uh, as a law student here, I had experience uh, working in, with uh, a few death row inmates, mm -hmm. uh, both in Terre Haute uh, and also in Michigan City, and visited with some death row inmates. And uh, that made me a lifelong advocate of death against the death penalty, which mm -hmm. I've uh, written articles about uh, several years for the American Bar Association. That was one event that uh, just uh, uh, really appealed to my spiritual depths mm -hmm. of, of uh, fighting capital punishment. Uh, also, there were so many prison uh, misconduct cases, conditions cases, that arose in the clinical program here because of the Westfield Correctional right. Center, which is only 10 miles outside of town. Right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there were so many complaints that the clinic was receiving about inadequate care, health care, food, the whole amalgam of, of issues. And uh, I took a stake in that along with some of my other students. We realized by, the, by filing litigation that that was a real practical means of trying to put into effect our, our deeper uh, beliefs. Um, one other event in a different sphere of, of law that really impacted me is when I uh, was a legal services lawyer, also working with migrant workers. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, a migrant workers program, still going on, and working with people who worked very, very hard, played by the rules, but were being cheated out of their wages, benefits, uh, by unscrupulous uh, interest. Uh, that also was a new dimension to my development that, mm -hmm. that uh, stays with me today when I think about all of the issues regarding uh, immigration, right. visas, political asylum that right. are going on in contemporary America. Those issues have not gone away. And the injustices are still there. And um, 
it's, it's really uh, a duty for all of us to convey to others that if they choose to go down this path, that uh, they can make a difference, even if the problems <laughs> perhaps will never disappear. It is, yes and no, because when I, I spent a term in New York, which I was, uh, I uh, also had an interest in, to be frank, uh, to see how I would play out on a, on a big stage. Yeah. But my responsibility, I was, I was an enforcement attorney, my responsibility in New York at the Attorney General's office, and by the way, my office was in the World Trade Center, which is oh, another wow. landmark event in my life, um, was to protect the rights of tenants who were being illegally evicted mm -hmm. in the process of converting low-rent apartments, primarily in Manhattan, to condos and co-ops during the uh, boom in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. There were massive uh, numbers of tenements, uh, single-room occupancy apartments, uh, where owners were hiring what I would call goon squads mm -hmm. to simply throw the poor people out so that the property would be vacant so that it would be suitable for mm -hmm. conversion. So we regulated that process of conversion and my responsibility was to litigate against real estate developers who were responsible for uh, that type of misconduct. Mm -hmm. And that did align with my interest because right. prior to that I had worked on, on tenants' rights issues for eight years. Well, I think that if you, it helps if you have an ethical, moral system that you're operating out of mm -hmm. that motivates you, because then that helps you to persevere with the work you're doing. And I think that's very important, because sometimes people go into one area thinking they're going to make a big impact right away, they get frustrated, and then they pull back and go in a different direction. And, they, and sometimes you get professionally lost if you don't quite know what's motivating you in a particular direction. So I think it's important if you have a strong sense of identity, personal mm -hmm. identity and, and a deeper core, th that strengthens you. Um, but but self-care is an important point, I'm glad you mentioned that because I have seen a lot of my colleagues uh, and friends who've gone through uh, all of the turmoil going back to the 1960s and who are still with us today who have not mastered self-care as well as perhaps they should have uh -huh. uh, because one tends to throw oneself entirely into a process and a progress of, of a case for example and uh, you lose sight of what you need to be able to sustain yourself so that that is an issue for some uh, uh, attorneys but it's also a general issue for Absolutely. attorneys attorneys it, it, being an attorney is an extremely stressful occupation mm -hmm. for those who actually practice law and I think most people certainly would agree with that it's a very extremely stressful situation and uh, there are a lot of organizations including with the ABA again and state bar associations who are more alert to those types of issues arising mm -hmm. and provide various help uh, to attorneys who are struggling mm -hmm. as, as a result but yes that is an important concern Well, I think it's important to take a longer view. I, I think that uh, students should appreciate that there's a lot of short-term pressure, particularly as you approach graduation or right after graduation, okay, now I've made this investment financial four years of my life or graduate school six, seven, whatever, uh, years of my life, I, I need to have a return on it right away. Mm -hmm. But I think that given the length of careers these days and the fact that people tend to work longer in life, particularly professionals, uh, because that's ultimately where much of the meaning of their life is found, plus we're all living longer, yep. that uh, students should try to have a longer focus and realize that their own life and their own career may take many uncharted paths, mm -hmm. but openness, self-confidence, uh, self uh, self-security are very important traits. And it's also important to uh, at times to remember the famous adage that not all who wander are lost. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully uh, uh, the path that one takes that will be enriching, even if they're not totally satisfactory, but you learn from mistakes, you, you learn from wrong turns in life. But I think having the longer perspective and having a clarity of what your ultimate vision and goals are helps to sustain you through the journey.